Good afternoon and welcome to Kingdom Evangelism UK. We will be continuing in our series on the study of the book of Psalms. The last time we looked at the imprecatory Psalms and we said that the imprecatory Psalms were Psalms that indicated that the psalmist was looking for God to vindicate and fight on his behalf. That's the behalf of the altar. Today we're looking at Psalm 37. Now Psalm 37 is one of those very mind-bending Psalms that force you to question whether God is hearing your prayer or not. It's an invocation of the psalmist asking God to be his course of justice. He's making an invocation for God's justice system to appeal over the wicked. Now the word psalm is a very interesting word. It means to pluck as in plucking a fruit or a musical instrument being plucked, uh, plucking a guitar string. So the word psalm actually means to pluck. It also means to shine forth. So the psalmist must shine forth. Hmm. Remember that the psalms were sang. The 150 Tehillim had no full stops, no punctuation marks in the original Hebrew. Now, the Hebrew language is much older than the English language. Now, the Hebrew alphabet gave rise to the English alphabet. The word Aleph, Bet are the first two words in the Hebrew alphabet. The Hebrew alphabet gave rise to the Greek and the Latin alphabet. Hence the reason for the word alphabet. Aleph, Bet, Alpha, Bet, two first words of the Hebrew alphabet. So the construction of the English language doesn't do much justice to the reading of the Old Testament or the Psalms. Of course, the Old Testament is written in Hebrew and Aramaic. So let's look at the Psalms in a bit more detail. Now, Psalm 37, I hasten to say, is an acrostic psalm, or acrostic psalm, meaning that the first letters of the psalms, or the first letters of the paragraphs, have a hidden meaning. So here is your challenge, to embark on finding these words, or oh, sorry, letters, to formulate what hidden message is in the Psalms, particularly Psalm 37 and the other acrostic Psalms. Psalm 37 answers the riddle of why good things happen to bad people. Let's read very constructively the Psalm to find out what David is trying to convey to us. Now this was written by David in his old age, obviously reflecting on life and the meaning of life as someone that has surrendered his life to God. Psalm 37. Let's look at Psalm 37.
Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity, for they soon shall be cut down like the grass, and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord, and do good, so shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. David is making a comparison between the wicked and the righteous. The trap laid for the wicked is that they think their prosperity will be forever. But David says, they soon shall be extinguished by the power of God. So he says, don't be envious or don't be worried, don't be depressed, don't be overly concerned with the sudden prosperity of the wicked. Now this is a question that all believers have. If I've been doing things the right way, why I am not the one prospering? And God says, wait. The wicked will not last forever. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way unto the Lord. Trust in him and he shall bring it to pass. Proverbs 16 and verse 3 enumerates this in a very similar way. It says, Put your confidence in God. Proverbs says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Or acknowledge the Lord in everything that you do and he will direct thy path and he shall bring forth your righteousness as the light God won't just provide for the righteous he will ensure that your righteousness is seen by all so there's a dual function for the righteous, not just to bring your works to pass, but to ensure that your righteousness is seen by the wicked. Rest in the Lord. Wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospers in his way. Because of the man that bringeth wicked devices to pass. Cease from anger, forsake wrath, fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. David says, if you become overly concerned with the works of the wicked, you yourself may emulate what the wicked man does. And the psalmist says, do not fret. Because if you do, it will only leave you to do evil. Evil doers will be cut off, and those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. You might remember Psalm Sorry, St. Matthew chapter 5 says, The meek shall inherit the earth. So there is a promise laid up for the righteous. For yet a little while, verse 10, and the wicked shall not be. Yes, I diligently considered his place, and it shall not be. But the meek will inherit the earth, and shall delight himself in the abundance of peace. The reward of the righteous shall be peace. The wicked plots against the just and gnashes upon him with his teeth. Thought, if the wicked is so prosperous, why is he plotting against the wicked? Ah. Why is he plotting rather against the righteous? Because the wicked is not at peace. And he sees the righteous at peace. 
because he knows he's righteous and the wicked is fearful. He lives in torment of being found out. And he's disturbed by the peace of the righteous. So the wicked plots against the righteous, plots against the just, and gnashes upon him with his teeth. The Lord shall laugh at him. Ha 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 ha. For he sees that his day is coming. The wicked has drawn out his sword. The wicked shall have his bow be broken. And it shall enter into his own heart. The little that a righteous man has, David says, is better than the riches of the wicked. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken. But the Lord upholds the righteous. The Lord knows the way. The Lord knows the days of the upright. And their inheritance shall be forever. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time. And the day of famine they shall be satisfied. You shall be satisfied in the day of famine. It might not be much. But God ensures that what he provides will last. He makes you to be satisfied. If you are envious of the wicked, you will not be satisfied. So David says, rest in the Lord. If you don't rest in the Lord, you become restless. You become angry. And you will respond to the wicked. But David says, if you rest in the Lord, you won't need to be worried about the wicked. If you rest in the Lord, you will be satisfied. If you rest in the Lord, you will find peace. If you rest in the Lord, the Lord will bring peace your works to pass but the wicked shall perish verse 20 and the enemies of the Lord shall be as the fat of lambs in other words they may seem to be prospering and you may seem to be going backwards ah they shall consume into smoke they shall consume away the wicked borrows and does not make payment but the righteous shows mercy and they give for such is blessed of him who inherits the earth and they shall be cursed shall be cut off in other words they shall be cursed by the Lord verse 23 the steps of the good man or the steps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord and he delights in his way the Lord will delight in the way of the righteous he will not delight in the way of the ungodly even if the righteous falls he shall not be utterly cast down for the Lord upholds him in his hand the prophet puts it like this he says rejoice not over me my enemy Micah chapter 7 though I fall I shall not be utterly cast down I shall rise again I shall arise why because your steps are ordered because your steps are directed before your steps are orchestrated by the Lord you shall not fall I have been young David says and now I'm old, yet have not seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging bread. Your loved ones, your inheritance, your offsprings shall not beg bread. You see, your righteous seeds shall endure for the next generation. But that's not the life of the wicked. Wickedness can only be perpetuated 
and become worse. But the righteous shall always be blessed because his seed inherits the blessing of the Lord. When Abraham paid tithe into Melchizedek, the Levite also paid tithe. So the good deeds of the righteous will always leave a legacy. He is ever merciful and lends and his seed is blessed. Depart from evil and do good and dwell forevermore. For the Lord loves judgment and he forsakes not his saints. They are preserved forever but the seed of the wicked shall evaporate. The righteous shall inherit the land and dwell therein forever. The mouth of the righteous speaks wisdom and his tongue talks of judgment. The law of his God is in his heart. None of his steps shall slide. The wicked watches the righteous and seeks to slay him. The Lord will not leave him in his hand nor condemn him when he is judged. Wait on the Lord and keep his way. He shall exalt thee to inherit the land but the wicked shall be cut off and you shall see it. Yet he passed away, and lo, he was not. Yes, I sought him, but he could not be found. Mark the perfect man, behold the upright, for the end of that man is peace. But the transgressors shall be destroyed together. The end of the wicked shall be cut off. But the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. He is their strength in time of trouble because you sow seeds of righteousness in your days of trouble the Lord will sustain you because your steps were ordered because your inheritance is righteousness in the day of trouble your righteous deeds your deeds of righteousness shall go ahead of you and perpetuate your life. So in the days of trouble, the Lord shall be your light. In Proverbs, it says, the lamp of the wicked shall be put out. Proverbs 24 verse 20. But the part of the righteous will shine brighter and brighter and brighter. Because the people who sat in darkness, they arose and they saw a bright light. Your light is coming. Your light is shining. Your light will shine forth like the psalmist. Do not fret. Do not do evil. Because your light will shine brighter and brighter. You see, God has no reward in testing the ungodly. But when God trusts the righteous and the righteous come forth with gold like Job, your days will be brighter and brighter and brighter. Verse 40 says, And the Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them. Why? Because you trusted in him. When you and I trust in the Lord, our steps will be ordered. Commit your way unto the Lord. Trust in him. 
Have confidence in him. Commit your plans to the Lord. Commit your vision. Commit the rest of the year. If you have had a trying first five months, commit the rest of this year to God. Don't deviate from the path of righteousness because the Lord will reward you. He will bless the work of your hands. Remain righteous. Remain steadfast. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. And he will reward you. Yes, in the time of famine, you will be satisfied.